uh, nuclear and defense uh, scientists was mart was assassinated and martyred he dedicated his life in the path of God and attained the lofty status of martyrdom and that was the his divine reward there are two major issues that must be seriously put on the agenda by the authorities. Firstly, to do the follow-up and prosecute the perpetrators and those ordering the plot. And secondly, to follow up the scientific researchers and efforts pursued by the martyr. I Speaking of this, uh, the family and the scientific community uh, and his uh, students, I wish to uh, offer congratulations to them for the martyrdom and also offer condolences for this loss. Sayyid Ali Khamenei, please recite a salawat. Uh, this uh, is a major loss and a tragic event. Dear nation of Iran, dear brothers and sisters, and I address uh, the participants taking part in this funeral procession at the Defense Ministry. And this is uh, a major loss for our nation and the scientific community and the people. The people are very sad and uh, feel sorrow. And speaking of the, and this is indicated in people's reaction and the public opinion, but the dear nation of Iran and the, the dear family of Martyr Fakhri the, the Holy Quran, has referred to the divine promise concerning seeking patience and steadfastness and resistance. Uh, we seek patience in the face of such tragic losses. We maintain our steadfastness. And as the leader mentioned in his message, there is going to be a punishment and a response to the perpetrators of this crime. There's going to be a revenge for them. Now, you see that our defensive and nuclear scientists and scholars have been targeted. What is the reason for that? Some say what should be done in order to put an end to such an enmity. Some say that through dialogue and negotiations, actions can be taken in order to put an end to such hostility. This is not possible because our enemies oppose the nature of the Islamic Republic establishment. The commander-in-chief of the armed forces and the leader, Imam Khamenei, has also mentioned this point. And he has referred to the global hegemony, that is, the rule by tyrants, 
those who consider themselves to be in a position to act in a bullying way towards other nations. The nature of the Islamic Republic establishment is in contrast with the global hegemony. Therefore, they will never put an end to their hostilities towards us. And today, we are beside the body of this martyr. We vow today that martyr Fakhrizade remained loyal to his promise with God, and today we vow to continue his path to continue his path we commemorate Martyr Mohsen Fakhri Zadeh and pay tribute to his pure soul. Well, there you have it. That was the representative of the uh, leader of the Iranian <laughs> revolution, Ayatollah Said Ali Khamenei, uh, just uh, reciting uh, the message uh, given by the leader, reading it to uh, the people who have attended that funeral ceremony. I'm just going to uh, give you a gist of what the representative said or some of the uh, important points. He said the murder, uh, the, sorry, the martyr dedicated his life to the path of God. Um, the leader has also said that there are two issues that should be followed and have to be followed actually by the authorities. First is finding and punishing the perpetrators of this heinous act. And second is continuing the efforts of uh, uh, Dr. Fahri Zode. Uh, the leader also expressed condolences to the family and students of the slain scientist as well as describing his loss as a major one as well as a tragic event. That funeral procession is still underway in Tehran after the body of the slain scientist was uh, taken to the holy cities of Qom and Mashhad uh, within the past day and now returned to his final resting place in Tehran. That venue itself, uh, I would imagine, not a cemetery, but it will be taken to a cemetery for the final burial in the next few hours or so as soon as we are finished with the uh, ceremony. Of course, uh, right now, different people take to the uh, podium to speak uh, high-ranking ones. We began with the representative of the Islamic leader as well. Right now, we're going to take you back there to listen to uh, another high-ranking official. In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate, I wish to welcome all the esteemed guests, the families of martyrs, and also the senior commanders and authorities and officials from the judiciary and uh, MPs. I wish to welcome you all. This is a commemoration ceremony belonging to the whole nation, but regretfully due to the pandemic, despite the fact that many people wanted to participate in this glorious ceremony, but this was not feasible, as I said, due to the pandemic. Today, 
شخصیتی ودا می کنیم we are saying farewell to a personality با خدای خود پیمان بست a personality that vowed with his God and remained loyal to his promise and maintained his steadfastness and eventually he attained martyrdom این شهید عزیزمون که عاشق شهادت بود he loved martyrdom and we congratulate him for attaining the lofty status of martyrdom we do regret this loss I sincerely offer my heartfelt condolences for this loss. If, if the enemies had not perpetrated this crime, and of course Martyr Fakhrizadeh was a dedicated person, if his blood was not shed, he perhaps would pass away as an anonymous person, but he used to be a role model for his students and colleagues, but he is no, but today he is known globally and from today, he is considered as a global personality and he is now a major role model. And scholars and his followers and his students can consider him as a role model and consider him as a role model in scientific activities, in dedication and self-sacrifice and result to him in different aspects of life. And the enemies must know that this is their first defeat if they killed our dear martyr to eliminate his name. But today you see that he has turned into an outstanding and prominent role model uh, for all these strugglers throughout the world. But the enemy's second defeat is that, that the enemy wanted to say that the martyr was the enemy seeks to claim that the martyr was trading a path that was not to the benefit of the nation and the enemy and the enemy introduced this martyr as the founder of our peaceful nuclear program. You see that this will not upset the nation at the same time. This is a source of pride for the nation. This is a source of pride for the defense ministry. This is a source of pride for the armed forces. The greatest threat to humanity is the nuclear weapon. And the enemies have manufactured these weapons and have stockpiled these weapons. The criminal Americans have nuclear weapons. The criminal Zionist regime. The criminal Zionist regime is in position of nuclear weapons. Are these used as a decoration at home? No. Our people are insightful, and they know, and the people, the Iranian nation knows very well that these weapons are the greatest threat to humanity. 
بزرگترین تهدید جهان یعنی تهدید هسته ای حفظ کنند اونها عزیزترینند اونها در نگاه و چشم ملت بسیار عزیزند ملت ما همه خدمتگزاران رو خدمتگزاران صادق خودش رو دوست دارد loves all the dedicated persons who are serving this country and the nation knows that the most honest servants are the ones who have dedicated their lives and they have been moving forward in order to defend this nation and eventually they emerge victorious and these are the most dear ones to our nation and the enemies are the most hated, are the most hated ones for our nation. And this was the second defeat for the enemies. And the third defeat for the enemy was that uh, they, the enemies thought that by perpetrating this action, they would be able to uh, actually crush the steadfastness of the nation. But you see that in the, the past couple of days, the people showed their paid tribute to the martyr and the nation enhanced the unity of the country. And one can clearly see this unity you see the participants in this ceremony standing together and they are paying homage to the pure body of this martyr. We promise to be more united, more resolute, having a more firm result in order to tread the path of the martyr as mentioned by the Commander-in-Chief. We will tread the path of progress more resolutely, with more firmness. Allow me to seize this opportunity and mention four points. The first point is that we are facing an enemy that has been saying for the past 40 years that the military option is on the table, but the enemy does not dare and did not have the chance of making use of this option. And eventually, the option was put under the table and that's been due to the dedication of our combatants and the efforts made by our scientists. This has been due to the insight of our nation and commanders led by the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, Imam Khamenei. Everyone should know that this progress will continue and this empowerment will continue. The second point is that the great efforts made by our dear martyr and extensive activities carried out by him in newly emerging arenas and innovative domains. And uh, I'm sure that he is not even satisfied to talk about those areas, but I can emphasize that his path will continue. And yesterday, we took the first step at the uh, budget meeting of the government. The, our budget for the year 1400 uh, had increased at the uh, Defensive uh, Innovation and Research Organization. Yesterday, we decided to double that budget. And for the uh, 1400 Iranian calendar, the budget has been doubled. The colleagues, I'm addressing the colleagues, friends, and students of Martyr Fakhrizadeh. This 
uh, has uh, increased the responsibility that you should or be taking the first step uh, and you should uh, continue his path in a steadfast and dedicated manner. The third point is that the enemy knows very well and, and I as a soldier tell the enemy that no criminality, no assassination uh, in fact, every criminal activity, every criminal action, every assassination will uh, receive a response. And they should know, the perpetrators should know that they will receive a crushing response and we will act in accordance with the order by the leader. Now, I wish to call on the IRGC commander, the intelligence minister, the police force commander, and the uh, head of the judiciary, the chief of the judiciary. I call upon them to to, to do the follow-up. We, we shoulder this responsibility. We will do the follow-up. And in this way, hopefully, we'll be able to uh, prosecute the perpetrators of this crime and those who have ordered this plot. And the fourth and the last point I wish to mention is that the nations and governments felt responsibility and voiced uh, uh, their hatred towards such an act of assassination. I wish to thank them, but those uh, who have uh, pursued a policy of appeasement, they should know that such a policy of appeasement towards terrorists will embolden the terrorists if, if one refrains from a strong approach a decisive approach, and if you remain if entrapped in your double, st double standards, you will one day suffer from such an acts of terror and assassinations and acts of terror. And concerning regional threats in Syria, in Iraq, we did combat the terrorists alongside the, their nations and governments. We will continue to do so, and we will combat the terrorists, and we are proud for, and we will remain proud. And whoever bows before the terrorists, he will be humiliated. بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم ان شاء الله آماده میشیم جهت اقامه نماز شهید دکتر محسن فخری زاده شهید راه اقتدار ایران اسلامی Now we are getting prepared to perform the prayers بیان بفرمایید عقب گرد بفرمایید به واسطه حفظ فاصله اجتماعی Please observe the social distancing and stand where you are موزیک مسیر تابوت رو فقط یه کوچولو باز کنید. باز کنم. الهی بیست.
Well, there you have it. Uh, the body of the Iranian scientist recently assassinated uh, is now being carried from the place that it was put just a second ago, where the Iranian defense minister, Brigadier General Amir Hotami, was making a speech that was brim with uh, feelings of the Iranian people uh, towards the enemies and how emboldened they have become, and that has to be addressed. He said that the name of uh, the martyr will be remembered, and he has attained the lofty status of martyrdom after assassination. Uh, we are just about to see the prayer over the uh, uh, body of the slain scientist that it will be observed any moment now. Uh, this is the part that is going to get underway quickly. Um, and after that, perhaps uh, mm, the body will be taken to its final resting place. We're waiting for that uh, prayer to take place. Uh, I think uh, I also can speak to our correspondent, uh, uh, Saman Kujuri, who is standing by for us. Um, um, and uh, we're going to take you to him any moment right now. Just to complete what I said, uh, the Brigadier General, the Iranian defense, defense Minister, said that the enemies have become more hated after these acts. He said that the enemies thought they could crush the steadfastness of the Iranian nation with these attacks, but they have been totally wrong. What you see on your, uh, for yourselves on your screens right now is the proper uh, prayer for uh, the, those who pass, uh, which is uh, right now underway. Let me just take you over there to another corner of that venue where I can see Salman Kujuri, our man is standing there. Let's just uh, ask him to share with us what he heard and what he's been observing since the early hours of today. Um, and of course, maybe he can tell us a little bit, not only about that place, but of course, the feeling that among that exists among the people who have attended that ceremony. Salman, if you hear me, we are ready for you. Sure thing. Uh, well, I'm talking to you from the main headquarters of the Defense Minister of the Islamic uh, Republic of Iran. This is. Uh, exactly the place where the funeral procession was uh, held for the deceased, departed soul, actually better say, of uh, the martyr uh, 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 Dr. Mohsen Fakhrizadeh, the top Iranian scientist who was assassinated several days ago in a multi-pronged attack by terrorists. Well, right now, as I'm talking to you, uh, uh, well, the body was taken to the other side of this venue, and prayers are being performed uh, for the departed soul of uh, Dr. Uh, Fakhrizadeh. And uh, well, this funeral, funeral procession was uh, uh, held in a very uh, limited space. I mean, a very limited number of people and participants, mainly uh, senior officials, state and military officials of the country, took part in this funeral procession, and, uh, along with the members of the family of. Uh, of uh, the, the assassinated, the, the martyred, better say, Mohsen Fakhrizadeh. So, uh, as uh, we were just uh, having live coverage of this uh, funeral procession, uh, the Defense Minister Amir Hatami took the podium and he made a speech and he highlighted several key points. Uh, he first of all he said that uh, the enemies should know uh, uh, that uh, if they, uh, although they have uh, killed or assassinated, better say, Dr. Fakhrizadeh. Uh, his personality has uh, turned into a role model for all the freedom seekers around the world. Before his uh, martyrdom, uh, Mohsen Fakhrizadeh was uh, only known uh, to Iranian officials, to Iranian youth, but after his assassination, after his martyrdom, now his personality, Dr. Fakhrizadeh has become a role model for the whole world, for all the freedom seekers and all those who are trying to hard on the path of scientific development. and so. This is a mistake that the enemy made. They thought that if they kill and assassinate Fakhrizadeh, his name would be in eliminated. But definitely, according to Iran's defense minister, his name will uh, remain eternal in the, in the history of science and development of the Islamic Republic of Iran, and the, the enemies have achieved nothing in return. Another point that he said was that um, uh, previously, uh, uh, the, doctor, uh, uh, they, the enemy thought that uh, they could hinder 
uh, Iran's scientific and nuclear achievements. But definitely after his, his martyrdom, Fakhrizadeh's martyrdom, uh, uh, will, his path will would continue much more resolutely than before. And more and more people will join this line of support, will join this line of uh, um, uh, actually uh, scientific achievements, and they will continue. And also he said that yesterday the big step was taken by the Islamic Republic of Iran and that the budget of the innovation department, the research and innovation department of the defense ministry was doubled uh, for the next Persian Iranian year. And this means that this has nation uh, 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 injected fresh energy and motivation to all the Iranian officials and the youth and scientists to continue the path of progress in science much more resolutely. This is what the defense minister said. And at the end, he said that as the leader of the Islamic Revolution, Ayatollah Khamenei has repeatedly said, and also other senior officials, which was indeed the demand of the Iranian nation, a crushing response and, and a very harsh revenge would await all the main perpetrators of those who were behind the attacks against um, uh, uh, Dr. Fakhrizadeh, uh, the top Iranian scientist. And all those uh, uh, perpetrators will one day in the near future will be brought to justice because this is the main demand of the Iranian nation who have been um, uh, working hard in the past couple of years to stand on their own feet since the, the establishment of the Islamic Revolution almost 40 years ago. So today what we see uh, according to Iran's uh, defense minister is the result of the hard working efforts and the fruitful achievements of science and the progress of the Islamic Republic of Iran which has made Iran uh, uh, shining in the whole world uh, in scientific circles and also in this certain achievements in science and uh, many more points that he just highlighted. So I'm talking to you from the venue where the process, the funeral pro uh, uh, procession is right now and, and, and in progress, is underway. There is a, a military parade over there, as you can see in coming pictures. The prayers for the departed soul of Dr. Fakhrizadeh was uh, held uh, with the participation of senior officials and the, the members of the family because of the coronavirus. So the public people, I mean, uh, public participation was a little bit restricted. So only senior officials and members of um, uh, the family of uh, the Dr. Fakhrizadeh were attending this funeral procession. But in general, I should say that yesterday the body of uh, Dr. Fakhrizadeh was taken to Imam Rizad, the Holy Shrine of Imam Rizad in Mashhad to be religiously uh, uh, honored and commemorated and then it was uh, taken uh, back to Iran to Tehran so that after this uh, procession he will be laid to rest um, uh, in eternal peace back to you now all right many many thanks that's uh, our correspondent Saman Kujuri um, reporting for us from the venue that was uh, uh, appointed for it that was actually um, given to this ceremony today. I really appreciate it, Saman. I got no more words with you. Perhaps, you know, maybe in the next few hours, if you can send us a report from that ceremony, of course, as well as what else you can include in your report. I really appreciate uh, your update on that. Let me just uh, say goodbye to you and speak to our viewers <laughs> just a little bit more uh, about, uh, again, these are the final. Mm, moments uh, uh, the, the body is actually uh, being given the final respects by the members of the Iranian uh, military, um, a custom um, that is always observed for the high-ranking officials of the country, this time, unfortunately, an Iranian scientist in the field of uh, peaceful nuclear energy Dr. Mohsen Fakhrizadeh, who was assassinated just uh, two days ago. Uh, I'm being told that we're little by little getting closer to the end of this live broadcast uh, uh, as Dr. Fakhrizadeh's body is being taken to his final resting place. And of course, in Press TV, we're not going to let that story go. Maybe we're just going to go off air momentarily. But uh, in our upcoming news bulletins, we are going to give you the updates as uh, um, far as the burial ceremony is concerned. Uh, let me just make one more mention of the fact that it was to be done with the full 
observation of the coronavirus protocols. That is why the attendance of the public is limited to a very, very small number. Live images from Tehran. We're going to get uh, back to the normal course of our programming uh, right now. We're going to close this live bulletin. And of course, updates are available both on our website and uh, in a news bulletin that I'm going to present to you in some 11 uh, minutes time. You're with Press TV. Don't you go anywhere. Uh, that were allegedly attacked with a chemical weapon. Um, I spoke with medical staff there who told me, um, as this is now a very well-known story, but anyway, he said, you know, what staff were treating were people that were coming in for normal shelling injuries, uh, suffocation injuries, gas or dust inhalation. So I asked them, like, were any of the staff wearing protective um, uniforms if they had allegedly been treating chemical weapons victims? He said, of course not. And I said, well, were any of the staff ill or anything like that? And he said, no. And he said, all the people that they treated that day were sent home. The BBC released a new radio podcast where they tried to whitewash the image of James Le Mesurier and the White Helmets. And in it, they attacked you and they attacked Vanessa Bealey. What are some of the other smears that they uh, put in there? Right, so I have to be honest, I haven't listened to the whole thing because it's appallingly awful and it's really painful to listen to. But they're they're running they're running with the theme that again that the white helmets are victims of an attack campaign led by Russia and that myself and Vanessa and other people are under the thumb of Russia and Syria and that we don't really know what we're doing kind of thing and that we're just like uh, allegedly um, just reading a script provided to us. This is the the, the uh, essence of what they're trying to purvey. Even though Vanessa, as you know, has many, many, many um, video interviews with civilians on the way home, it's, and I have also. Uh, but the, um, the other funny thing was, the, and it's, it might seem like a minor point, and I personally don't care a whole lot, but it's, it was just funny that in one of the episodes, they, um, they interviewed Sean Penn, a well-known actor, and uh, he claims to have met Vanessa, and he, he describes her, um, I'm going to paraphrase, he didn't know if he was talking to a crazy activist, a Russian uh, agent, or somebody who was perhaps telling the truth. It's, roughly what he said. But the thing was, he didn't meet Vanessa Bealey. <laughs> I met him in late 2016. It was when I was in the US doing a speaking tour after I had left Aleppo uh, in November 2016 and the city had been under ter um, intense terrorist attack. And so in my speaking tour, I was talking primarily about the suffering civilians in Aleppo were enduring under these bombardments, you know, with mortars, missiles, gas canister bombs, etc. And uh, so I was touring and I was in LA and it, it was arranged for me to meet with Penn. And um, we met in his home for a couple of hours and he seemed receptive to information on Syria. He had been there at least once I was told. Um, he seemed to be interested in what I had to say. It was with a, a great deal of surprise that he later described me as, um, that I learned that he described me as, you know, oh, crazy activist I'm, I'm used to, but like a Russian agent, like, come on. <laughs> But uh, so I, I, tr I did try challenging him. So I did tweet at him. I haven't gotten a response. But the main point was, again, it's not about me. The point is, if you don't even know who you met in 2016, you know, Vanessa is uh, considerably taller, as I said, blonder, more British than I am. And if he cannot remember that detail, how are we supposed to take as credible anything that he has to say about, you know, Syria, much less the White Helmet? Did the BBC actually ever provide any evidence to refute your reporting? No, it's never, it's, it's always character assassination. And you mentioned a previous smear. There was a December 2017 uh, smear by The Guardian who had their, their expert, who happened to be a, a fashion and tech expert, approach us with a very um, incriminating series of questions about our relationship to the Syrian, Russian, and in my case, DPRK governments, and whether we had any funding by them and how we were able to go to these countries. And of course, the insinuations were that we're stooges of these governments, right? But then the ensuing character assassinations are, sorry, the ensuing smears or reports that they issue are character assassinations. And they, they don't look at, for example,